everyone, this is Alex and I'm back for a top 10 and a Tim Burton top 10. I, top 10. I know I haven't been doing this in a while um, because obviously I've been doing my Broadway Bay reviews and I wanted to take a break from that um, and things like that and I, and I felt like I, I wanted to do something, you know, Tim Burton related because obviously that's really what my channel is more dedicated to. Um, so I was trying to think of what could I do, I've got a few ideas in mind, but I was thinking of is there another top 10 I can do and I remember a while back um, I did my top 10 funniest moments in his movies and then I thought let's go the opposite way and go for emotional moments. See the thing about me and watching films and stuff, um, I always have to, I, I always want to come out feeling that I've had emotional experience and that I've ended up emotionally invested in what was going on and this is something that pretty much every Tim Burton film has done and one of the reasons I still think you know his films are influential because they connect you on an emotional level. So I thought, what would be the top 10? So this is what we're going to do today, and I hope you enjoy. And again, this is all opinion based, and also, like my usual rule, um, I can only pick uh, one moment from each film, whether it could be like a scene or, you know, a character or something like that. So with, without further ado, let's get to the list. Okay, so I put this at the list because, um, well, it's sort of, I think it's a great example of the idea of someone becoming famous and s sort of having that distance from their family, but realizing that they're still a big part of the life. And it's also on the list because it actually made a connection to Tim Burton's real life, um, because there's a little passage that I found when I was reading Burton on Burton, which is um, definitely worth the read. Um, so in the chapter of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, let me find it. So um, in the film, uh, when Charlie is wandering around, you know, um, um, Wonka's father's house, um, he sees a lot of newspaper articles about Wonka, like all the newspaper clippings clipped in a scrapbook. And this connects to Tim Burton because, and I read, um, I remember talking about it with Helena and she actually mentioned the kind of thing that I was thinking about, which was when we went to visit my mom before she died. I didn't have a great relationship with her, but when we went to her little house in Lake Toho, she had all these posters of stuff of mine, and it was quite horrifically touching in a way. We couldn't really connect, but at the same time she was certainly following what I was doing. Anything like that, that that's real makes it easier for you to do in a way. I found that interesting and also um, he mentions it in the in the commentary. So the idea of like, you know, a family member, you know, lose, not losing contact but sort of with a s sort of distant relationship and yet still still sort of following them and still, you know, interested in what they're doing because at the end of the day, you know, they are your children. And so so when I see that scene in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's it's pretty quite touching and I'm sure um and I do wonder like what other celebrities had that sort of thing. It it's 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 quite interesting. So um and it creates a really, really touching moment. And even though it wasn't in the book, I'm really glad they sort of added more to Wonka's character. Um, to be honest, like I, but still, you know, but you know, at least showing a bit of an emotional side of him. So I think that's welcome. So this is a very, very small moment in the movie Big Eyes, but to me, it really came down to the way that it was shot and the way that. Um, Amy Adams' performance was. Obviously Christoph Waltz did an incredible job as Walter Keane, but in this particular moment um, I give points to Amy's just silent acting. I mean it was absolutely phenomenal when I watched it. Um, I loved the whole, I loved the idea that when she came into the hungry eye she, you know, she was carrying a painting and she was like dressed up and everything and she comes in in this room and it's fully red and then she sort of comes in a silhouette. It's sort of like a you know, it, it sort of gives that sort of idea of, yes, this is, you know, this is going to have a negative impact on her for the fact that she's arriving at the club and she's going to realise what Walter's actually been doing behind her back. And, but the thing that really made me feel for her was just that look that she gives at the very end of the scene. 
um, when Walter says, I'm the artist and whatever, and it just, you know, slowly pans in on her face and that reaction, it just says it all. I mean, you know, she, you know, she fell in love with this man and they got married and, you know, and, you know, she thought that he was just selling her paintings and she was so happy, you know, that her paintings were getting recognized and then she finds out that it's, you know, been part of a lie. And I think that reaction just says that so well. I mean, there, there's another emotional moment um, that's sort of like that when she realizes, I won't give anything away here, but she realizes something else about Walter. Um, it's, it's a part when she, like, uh, takes, takes a bit of a way of a painting. I won't say any more than that, but if you guys seen the film, you probably know what I'm talking about. Because, again, the performances from those two, absolutely amazing. And it also showed a bit of, it also kind of showed a little bit of sadness in Walter's character. Like, I didn't think they were gonna... Um, I don't think, I, I was impressed that they managed to get that angle from him and that was really, really great. So it's not just, you know, they, they never make it like one side. It's, 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 a, defun it's a dysfunctional relationship and it was, it was so interesting, but man, it got a few emotional moments, definitely. Well, this is sort of half emotional and half happy at the same time. Um, of course, as many of Nightmare fans know, obviously Jack fails in creating his own Christmas because, of course, it's very Halloween and scary. Um, and, you know, um, and of course he sings a song when it all goes. Uh, when, when his sleigh is uh, pretty much blown up and he ends up back in the cemetery. What I really find emotional about this scene is because it's just the throughout the film like when he comes across Christmas Town and you know him making Christmas I mean that amount of passion and enthusiasm that he has and then finding out that it's just not for him but at the same time they do make it up by saying that you know what he is the pumpkin king he is great at Halloween and he gets excited and he realizes his love for Halloween and I really really like that it's one of the things that I love about Nightmare for Christmas it, it sort of gives a very sort of, you know, hard lesson for kids, but a really good reali re realistic lesson for them is that, you know, you're not going to be, there are some things that you're just not going to be good at and like stick to, you know, what you're good at and exceed in that. And I think that's a very realistic message and, I'm, and I, I really give a lot of credit to that movie for that. Um, but at the same time, you know, you do feel really sorry for Jack, just the amount of, you know, passion and enthusiasm that he brings to it. and. You know, you kind of feel, you kind of feel sorry for him, definitely. Well, this was really interesting, because I remember um, going to see Frank and Weenie, and of course I had already like seen the Frank and Weenie short that Tim Burton made in, oh, let me think, 1984? I think Vincent was 1982. Okay, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, the black and white short uh, that he made. And one of the things that I was interested in is how they were going to expand the story. And of course, you know, you know, the short was like the base story. And so in the in this one, they sort of um, expanded it and also explored a bit more of the relationship. So you see Victor on his own. You see Sparky on his own. They, you know, they develop what kind of characters they are, and they also develop the relationship pretty early on. So. You know, I was I was thoroughly impressed that they managed to get us really into the emotion, despite the fact that we know, especially for those who've you know watched the short, we know that Sparky's going to have to die. Um, but you know, just the fact that they still built up that relationship. So when it does happen and he does get killed, it's still really heartbreaking. And I I, I just love that scene when you know Victor goes back up to the attic and you know watches like the old uh, you know videos that he made with Sparky. And I think. It's something that I think really captures the idea of what happens when you lose when you lose someone you love, whether it's you know a pet or you know uh, you know a family member or a loved one. It's like you know you sort of try and look back and find ways to get through it. And you know, watching that video sort of reminded me, like you know, when I looked through old photos, or hey, I even came across some like you know these really old time videos of my past family members that have gone. So you know, I I sort of really connect with that, and I think it it just shows, you know, the idea of grief, and it does it in a very emotional way.
much like Nightmare Before Christmas, um, Corpse Bride sort of ended sort of not completely a happy ending, but not completely a sad ending either. And that's actually, that's one of the things that I really love about Tim Burton films as a whole, is that I never feel like, you know, a lot of them have just a happy ending or just a sad ending. You know, some there's a lot of them are very, very mixed, and you come out like feeling, you know, sort of all these mixed feelings, and in a good way, obviously. And Corpse Bride was one of them, and the fact that it was in, you know, you know, it was animated and for kids, it was even more interesting. I sort of wish, I sort of wish more kids' films sort of ended like this, or at least sort of, you know, mixed it up a little. Um, you know, and Corpse Bride certainly does that, and I think it's just. I like how it sort of ends on a very quiet note, but at the same time, because you love these characters so much, it feels much bigger. Actually, that's a recurring theme in his endings. They feel, they, f you know, even though technically within the universe they're quite small, they feel big, you know, to you having watched it. And um, Court Bride is such a great example of that. The music, the animation, it's, it's fantastic, and you just, you feel really good watching it, even though it's emotional as well. So I already talked about Catwoman a lot, both from my, well, <laughs> from my Batman Returns review, my top 10 Tim Burton couples with, with Batman, and then obviously uh, top 10 leading ladies in his films. But I thought, really, I need to put her in the emotional stuff. Um, just because, again, it was the first experience that, you know, I wasn't, at the time, I wasn't really into comic books or superheroes or stuff like that. But the fact that, you know, I was, I was getting into, like, Tim Burton films and finding out that he, you know, directed two Batman movies, I was like, okay, I'll give them a go. And, and it was one of those things where the reaction, I was like, wow! You know, now I get why people are so into it. You know, there's more to, you know, these kind of stories than I thought. And Catwoman especially was one of them. Like, I didn't know that, you know, uh, uh, you know a comic book character could be this kind of messed up or emotional or complex or whatever. And just seeing that performance in Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer, she's the definitive of the Catwoman in my mind, okay? I can't imagine anyone else, you know. Uh, you know, there, there have been others I've enjoyed. Um, but Michelle Pfeiffer, she's the definitive one, and just seeing, uh, you know, I love how she's just in the background and the first, you know, you never, you know, you would never think that she'd be the main character, one of the main characters, and then, you know, just seeing, you know, her, like, getting more and more damaged and it physically shows in the costume as well and seeing you know her at the end when you know Batman finally reveals that he's Bruce Wayne and stuff and just that whole performance oh it gets me every time so uh, yeah I have to put her on this list again I won't go too much into it because I've talked about her too much but yeah it's fantastic but emotional as well So another set of characters. I was just gonna put Sweeney Todd on the list, but after thinking about it, I was like, well, Mrs. Lovett's a tragic one as well. <laughs> Let's just put both of them on. Um, I think, God, I think it's just the way that, you know, just everything from like the performance and the look, the, the look that they were given and just the tone of the movie and the songs they were given and just even like simple stuff like, you know, one, I, I love how the blood was used in, in, in moments of the film, like, you know, like when he has, like, the bloody fingers and, he, and you know, he, he slides it down the photo of his wife and child. Oh, love that idea! And I, I love, you know, the blood spreading at the end, like, really, really slowly. I, oh, I love it! Um, so... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just dark and twisted like that. But um, I think, I think it's just that idea of they're, they're both so far gone, and it's like, well, Sweeney Todd's definitely far gone, and like, you know, they, you know, Tim, Tim and Johnny just like joke, like, yeah, he's pretty much dead at the beginning, so you know, there's not much hope there, and like Mrs. Lovett, you know, trying to, you know, get his attention and sort of that, that idea, and you know, just, I, I, I love that scene when she comes up, and. Um, you know, she says, you know, can I ask you a question? Like, do you actually remember your wife and all that sort of thing? Like, I love that moment between them. And then, you know, just... And I also love the the sort of ending when 
Sweeney Todd realised someone who he's killed, I won't say who, but, um, and then Mrs. Lovett, like, you know, she's like, oh my god. So, I love that moment. I, I just think it was just everything about the characters, like, those two. I, I had to put both of them on the list, like, I think, you know, even though they're partners in crime, they're just so far gone and so dead and just, you know, they're, they're, they're a lost cause and that's emotional and I think the way they, they showed it, the performances, the music, you know, even the way they edited it, it was great. So, there you go. Well, considering that Ed Wood, a lot of people remember more of the comedy from that movie. People see, people usually do remember uh, Martin Landau as Bela Lugosi, as he did win an Oscar in his Best Supporting, Best Supporting Male Actor, and what was it, Best Makeup for turning him into Bela Lugosi. In fact, actually, that was one of the reasons why they turned Ed Wood into a black and white film, is because he looked more like Bela Lugosi when they turned it in, and I cannot imagine that film in colour. It's just, it's meant to be in black and white. But, um, but, yeah, no, the reason why I put it so high on the list is because, well, one, because of Landau's amazing performance, I mean, just unbelievable. Um, you know, and but also just the relationship between him and Ed, like that's that's like the center, like that's the heart of the film, and just seeing that like sort of respect and like you know someone you look up to and seeing that connection. Um, a lot of critics like in the t at the time they were like saying, oh, like this is probably connects to uh, you know Tim Burton and Vincent Price because obviously Vincent Price was Tim's hero. So and I was like, yeah, you know what, I can see that, and um, I think just the you know, the sort of, but also that added thing, factor of, you know, Bela Lugosi being washed up and, you know, the, his his problems with his drug addiction and the fact that he wants to get out of it and just, and I, I love, I love the scene when, you know, they're creating, like, the first scene in Plan 9 and, you know, and Bella's like, you yeah, know, when are we going to make another movie? And it's just, it's a, such a, it's such a heartwarming scene and I, I love it and, um, you know, it's, like I said, their relationship is the heart of the story and the most emotional, definitely. Oh, wow, I was crying a lot when I saw this for the first time. <laughs> Um, like I like I said many a times, um, I didn't even know who Tim Burton was when I saw Big Fish, um, but it was my 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 house I, I believe it was my house mistress favorite film of like one of her favorite films and she was like oh my god you have to see it it's so amazing and so we all watch it i had no idea what big fish was even going to be about but i was like okay and by the end crying like a baby uh, i think and i think a lot of people do like I, I do talk to people and they're like oh my god like the ending's so amazing and like oh i was crying so much and i think it's just that idea of like the tag tagline says in the movie, you know, it's a movie that's bigger than life itself. And the the whole point that makes it so emotional is the fact that it's reflecting on someone's life. And that's what people think about usually when they do lose a love loved one. You know, this is kind of going back to the, what I said with, you know, Sparky's death and Frank and Weenie. It's just that, but the, the fact that, you know, just that that whole idea of showing, you know, Edward Bloom's life just completely in front of him, like everything he's gone through and all that sort of thing and just, you know, becoming what he always was, a very big fish, you know, it's, it's just, it's, you know, it's just putting, putting your life into that whole thing and it's just, oh, it's so hard to explain but when you watch it, it's like, you know what, uh, yeah, you know, it makes you appreciate life, it makes you appreciate, you know, the ones around you and, you know, it, you know, it, it, it just feels so good and yet so, so sad at the same time and I, again, it's one of those films that just ends on such mixed emotions, like you're not completely sad but you're not completely happy either, it's just a sort of mix of the two and it's, it, I love endings like that where it's so in between and, you know, Big Fish is just such a great example of that, um, you know, it's, it's just a great film to explain life, you know, so there you go. Well, you're probably thinking that because Ed Wizard's Hands is my favourite movie, obviously I'm going to put <laughs> the most... And considering that that movie is quite an emotional movie, you're, you're probably thinking, yeah, you've put that at number one. 
But which scene have you put on? Is it the hold me scene? Is it the ice dance scene? Is is it the the bit when you know Kim and Ed would say goodbye? Well, I was thinking of like, okay, which scene really does make me feel like the most emotional? Because I mean, the whole film pretty much does, but you know, at the same time, I was like, okay, and I was like, oh wait. It's easy. There is one particular scene that I think, to me, is the most emotional moment in the movie. You might disagree with me, but this is my personal opinion. Here we go. Yes. This, to me, is the most emotional moment in it. Because I, I think it explains the just the idea of you know, uh, the loss of a loved one, the fact that it was no one's fault, it, the whole scene was done with hardly, like, w one line from Vincent Price, that was it. So, pretty much no dialogue, and uh, just, just the idea of, you know, this, you know, explains the way that Edward is, and just, uh, it, it, uh, just the fact that he was just so close to, you know, being complete and just, I mean, the, the music, the performance, the way the whole scene was shot, it was just, oh god, it just gets to me every single time I watch it, <laughs> you know, it's sort of, to me it like, it represents, you know, part of Edward's character and how, you know, it's such a universal feeling of, you know, being so close and not getting, you know, that sort of thing and feeling incomplete and, you know, and, and and at the same time losing someone that you love very closely to you, and it's, oh, it's, yeah, that's my, I think, I think I've explained why it's my emotional moment, if I go any further I'll probably start crying, <laughs> there you go, um, so those are my top 10 emotional Tim Burton moments. I wonder what, what what moments you thought were the most emotional in his movie. So I'd be very interested to know. But until then, I shall see you next time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.